On December 21st of 1944, the German offensive through the Ardennes Forest that became known as the Battle of the Bulge was into its sixth day. And on that day, uh, Allied High Command met at Bradley's headquarters in Verdun to decide what their next course of action was going to be. Uh, the city of Bastogne, which was a, a, a road hub where seven different roads came together, had been completely encircled. Uh, there were about 18,000 men from the 101st uh, Airborne Division and the 10th Armored Division who were besieged there. And uh, General Patton, who is uh, rather well known for his boldness, suggested that if he had the fuel, he could make a quick turnaround and drive north and open up the siege or break the siege of Bastogne. So the, uh, the baton is handed off to him and the, the third army makes this monumental shift and starts heading north and spearheading the advance would be the fourth armored division. Right now, I am in the, the small village of Assenois, which is fairly close to Bastogne. And this is the place where Combat Command R of the 4th Armored Division was advancing through on the 26th of December 1944. Uh, Combat Command A and Combat Command B had, had both been tied up. And it, it was this part of the 4th Armored that was having some success. And in CCR, or Combat Command R, Reserve, uh, was the 37th Battalion, led by Creighton Abrams. Now, again, I'm in the village of Asinwa, and we're going to come back to Creighton Abrams here in a little bit because we brought something along with us today that is tied to him that is just pretty darn cool. But on the, the 26th of December, 1944, uh, well, the 4th Armored Division had made their way uh, through the village of uh, Clochemont and had reached this village right here. Uh, this is getting pretty close to the Bastogne perimeter, and the resistance here in this village was just as fierce as it comes. Uh, so there were anti-tank guns, there were, you know, German infantry. Uh, th there was one heck of a fight that took place here in this village. And uh, it was tasked with uh, to a, a person by the name of Lieutenant Charles Bogus, who was with the 37th Tank Battalion, to, to drive on through this village and get to a crossroads uh, close to Bastogne by dark to try and achieve some kind of link up. So while the fighting is still going on here, well, Bogus is going to advance up this road right here, which is pushing towards Bastogne to try and reach this crossroads by dark. Thank you. 
we've moved up the road a little ways towards Bastogne. And uh, as the, the fight was still continuing in Assinois, well, the, the task fell to a lieutenant by the name of Charles Bogus to get up here and reach this crossroad, uh, which is kind of across from that white building. Uh, now, there aren't many vehicles here. It's like a half track, uh, a couple of tanks, and then some, you know, infantrymen in, in trucks. Uh, well, the half track gets to the, uh, the crossroads. It gets hit and is now a flaming wreck. So, so Bogus circles out into this field right here. And at this spot, well, you can see where there is a German pillbox right here along the road. So uh, he, he sends three rounds into this pillbox, and you can actually see where a few of these rounds hit. So obviously there's a big hit right there. Um, by the way, Burgess is in a Sherman Jumbo uh, that is nicknamed uh, the Cobra King. And right here by this window looks like another hit. And then all along here, well, you can see these pock marks or spang in this pillbox where all of this uh, firefight took place. That is a little bit larger hit right there. Uh, so anyway, uh, again, um, the, the Cobra King hits, hits this about three times. Uh, and then you have, uh, you know, these armored infantrymen who are porting out of the trucks and coming up here and they engage in firefight. This whole thing doesn't last very long. We're talking maybe 10 or 15 minutes. And by the time it's all said and done, you've got about 21 dead Germans who are lying all about this area. Now, after the action here at the crossroads, uh, Bogus' men are kind of clearing out the woods in this area. Bogus said that he advanced and there was an open field. Now, right there in the distance is the city of Bastogne. So they're, they're close at this point. And he said he looked out over the field and he could see different colored parachutes. And he noticed like some silhouettes uh, off in the distance. So he decided to just take a chance. He called out, hey, you know, we're, th we're with the 4th Armored Division. He said after several calls, this officer came up and uh, casually walks up to him with a big smile on his face. And uh, he says, I'm Lieutenant Webster, 326 Airborne Engineers. I'm happy to see you. And with that, on the evening of December 26th, well, the 4th Armored under Patton's 3rd Army had made their breakthrough into the Bastogne perimeter. I'm just outside of Bastogne, on one of the roads that the 4th Armored Division came up on December 26, 1944. And what I have here is a really special artifact, and that's the Distinguished Service Cross Medal that was given to Lieutenant Colonel Creighton Abrams. And he was awarded this Distinguished Service Cross for action here on December 26. This is actually his second Distinguished Service Cross. He received another one. Uh, in September of 1944. Um, he donated this medal to another museum which is now, is now closed but it also came with a, a note from him that's pretty interesting. Um, he, he donated this medal when he was serving as commanding officer or commanding general in Vietnam. So it's a real honor for me to bring out Abrams Distinguished Service Cross to this spot today. All right, well, uh, there you go. Pretty cool to be back here in this spot with the Distinguished Service Cross of uh, Creighton Abrams. And to also stand right here where, where this historic link up occurred on the 26th of December, 1944.